Well, good morning. Good morning, friends, and welcome to worship this morning. It's good to see all of you here. Welcome to all of you who are newcomers with this morning. We're really glad that you've come. Some of you are visiting town and, and uh, visiting family. We're so glad that you uh, came this morning. And, and to the Jorgensen clan, we're so glad that you're here. Uh, Tyler and Ashley are bringing their baby, uh, little baby Andrew, for baptism this morning. So we welcome you, family. Thank you for being here together. Hey, it's a good day to lift up the name of the Lord. We're here for two reasons. We praise God for all of who He is, and we praise God for all that He has done, especially the work that Christ has won and done for us on the cross and His victory over the grave as well. We're here to lift up the name of the Lord. So let's begin with prayer. Would you please pray with me? And Lord, we pray that You would send Your Spirit upon us this morning and do more than what any of us could ever ask or imagine. Lord, draw us, draw us to Yourself, Lord, and, and some of us today, we need conviction. Some of us need, Lord, your compassion and your comfort. Some of us, Lord, need your challenge. Meet us where we are. But Lord, help our hearts to lift up before you and bring praise and honor and glory to you today. We love you. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Hey, let's stand. We're going to lift up the na uh, name of the Lord in song. Stand with me. Here's what the Scriptures say. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol Him, all you peoples, for great is His love towards us and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Amen? Let's praise the Lord. The Lord's our rock, in Him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever ill be tied, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. A shade by day, defense by night, a shelter in the time of storm. No fears of harm, no foes of right, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. The raging storms may round us beat, a shelter in the time of storm. We'll never leave our safe retreat, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, rock divine, oh, refuge dear, a shelter in the time of storm. Be thou our helper ever near, a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. my Lord. Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever. From him no power of evil can sever. He gave his life to ransom my soul. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus. 
Jesus, Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Once I was lost in sin's degradation, Jesus came down to bring me salvation, lifted me up from sorrow and shame. Now I belong to Him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Joy flood my soul, for Jesus has saved me, freed me from sin that long had enslaved me. His precious blood he gave to redeem. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me, not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Friends, please pray with me. And Lord, we bless you that it's not by our own doing, Lord, that we become yours, but it's all that you did for us when you died upon the cross and rose again, Lord, on the third day. And you opened our eyes and moved upon our hearts to believe, Lord. It's because of you that we belong to you. And to you be all honor and glory and thanks. We love you, Lord. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Hey, friends, turn to a neighbor behind you, in front of you. Find someone. Welcome them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, please have a seat, friends. We got some neat things to share today. I want to draw your attention to the uh, connection card that's inside of your uh, worship uh, bulletin. If you're a newcomer with us, we'd love to have uh, the opportunity to meet you, greet you, uh, and sometimes the only opportunity we have is to get to know you through this connection card. If you wouldn't mind filling that out, we'd be honored. And uh, just for the trouble, well, you can bring this to the welcome table by the glass doors in the back. And a team member there has a little gift just to say thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, you can all uh, participate. Uh, there's, if you have need for prayer in your life or have somebody in your life who needs us to pray or somebody to pray, why, uh, write that down. And I, I, I pray through these. i got a whole stack of them that I pray through for you. Uh, this is sometimes my opportunity to keep up with your life a little bit and the needs that are happening. So uh, again, just fill that out for the prayer request. Bring that to the welcome table. Uh, those will stay confidential and go to me as well. Okay, we got some appreciation we need to show this morning. You know, so quickly, uh, our uh, Sunday school season will come to its end for the year. Uh, family night has finished up, and we just need to show a little love and appreciation. We can do that, can't we? So, yes, we can. So I, want, I need some little help this morning. We want to show you some appreciation. If you've been a Sunday school teacher, a family night leader, a children and worship leader, or a small group ministry facilitator, or youth sponsors. Why don't you stand up for us? Okay, I don't want to put you on the spot. So we do it all together. All right, goodly number. We're not done yet. If you've served as a Sunday school officer or on the church staff, go ahead and stand up. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, uh, the VBS uh, planning committee, uh, a VBS volunteer, a Christmas program volunteer, or working with the kids for Palm Sunday Kids Choir. Why don't you stand up? Any more? Okay. Uh, and then we got more. Opening exercise leader. If you're a children worship helper, a classroom aide for special needs students, a substitute teacher, a prayer coordinator, you help with family night meals, you're the library or work with the librarians, or you're a nursery attendant, everybody stand up who does one of those things. Got a few more. All right. Thanks be to God. Now let's turn, look around you a little bit. There's a few people in front of you. There might be a few people behind you. Okay, notice those people. And let's just give them our thanks with a round of applause. 
And you can sit down and everybody's anxiety goes down at the same time. <sighs> Thank you, everyone. You know, we can't, we can't do ministry. We can't do ministry without the faithful service of, of people such as yourself. You know, I'm, I'm tempted to stop using the word volunteer and start using the word servants because that's what Jesus does. He serves and He calls us to serve as well. And we can't do it without you, you know, faithful servants. Thank you so much for what you do. You know, when, in, in a few moments, well, we're going to have the little baptism for, for Andrew. And we all stand up and say, we're going to help. You know, today we're going to help Tyler and Ashley. Part of that help is saying, you know what, I'm going to be a Sunday school teacher or children worship leader. I'm going to be the church librarian or help with this or be a family night facilitator. That's part of the commitment we do when we you know, make our pledge and promises in baptism. So thank you, everyone. Uh, today, just a quick note, we're going to have two offerings again today. The uh, bags will be our regular offering. The plate will be that special offering if you would like to contribute to some of the flood relief effort in Nebraska to a little town called Winslow. Uh, you can have that opportunity today. So the plates will be for that special offering, the blue bags for our regular offering. Uh, today, after this, our first service, uh, we're gathering in the fellowship hall if you would like to be a part of that uh, meeting uh, to talk about the church's response to you know, same-sex behavior and uh, traction and marriage you know, and the resolution that the consistory uh, developed. And we're going we're to talk about that and vote on that so, uh, to receive it. So if you'd like to be a part of that, please come. Find a seat pretty, grab some coffee if you'd like it. Find a seat pretty quickly and we'll get started for that as well. And then also this, just for your information, summer worship is coming up. Uh, that will begin on our graduation Sunday, the last Sunday in May. Uh, and then we'll, con we'll conclude then the last Sunday of August with the outdoor worship service uh, with the barbecue and everything on August 25. So please prepare for that. It'll be 9.30, one combined service, a joyous and wonderful time. Joellen and Laura have been doing a good job, haven't they? Oh, okay, yeah, you can applaud for them. They're doing a great job. And much of what we've experienced in those combined times we'll continue to experience this summer as well. So you've got something to look forward to. Now, we need to pray for some people. There's a lot of folks on our list, and we're going to name them by name this morning and some particular ones to, to bring you know, to our attention. Um, but uh, Phyllis DeVries called me last night and said, Pastor Paul, uh, Edgar just flew to Sioux Falls. He's got pneumonia real bad. So we need to pray for Edgar DeVries today. All right, he's in the ICU in Sioux Falls. But, you know, he's awake and aware, but he's in some pretty tough shape. Um, you know, the old Dutchman guys, he said, ah, I can wait till Monday. And now the doctor said, you ain't waiting till Monday. You're going now. So we need to pray for Edgar, and we need to pray for Phyllis. So let's lift them up before the Lord. Of course, I mentioned uh, Anna Rensing's family. Let's remember to pray for them. But also we need to remember to pray for Midge Andriga, uh, her family. Uh, Midge died this past week, and her services will be here tomorrow afternoon at the church. So let's remember you know, Greg and Janet and their family, and, and, and Greg's brother Mike too, and, uh, and their loss of Midge. So with those things in mind, our list in the bulletin, let's bring them all to the Lord in prayer. Please pray with me. And Lord, we bring to you our, our prayer this morning because you're the only one who has power to answer. And sometimes, Lord, you, uh, you answer in the moment. Sometimes, Lord, you answer at a future date. Sometimes, Lord, you say, that one, that prayer will be answered when my kingdom comes in all of its fullness. But Lord, you, also, you always answer. Whether it's a prayer for healing, it's a Lord, a prayer for um, help, you answer. Not always the way we, we think you will, but you answer. Sometimes not now, sometimes no. But Lord, you always answer. And we bring you our prayer this morning. Lord, the, the acute needs are for Edgar, Lord, and his, uh, his illness with, with, the, um, with the pneumonia. We pray for him. And Lord, that you will lay your healing hand upon him and cast forth this pneumonia out of his lungs, Lord. And, and with it, Lord, to revive him and give him uh, strength once again. And so we lift him up before you, Lord, today. And we also pray that you would give to Phyllis, Lord, your peace. You know, as she stands by and prays for him, encourages him, helps him, Lord, on a, on a path towards healing. Give her peace, Lord, just the same. And cause us to gather around them as as encouragement, but also, Lord, in prayer for them as well. Father, we lift up Midge's family to you, for, for my, uh, Greg and Janet and uh, Greg's brother Mike, and uh, Lord, Greg and, and Janet's uh, children as well. We lift them up and we pray for them, Lord. Uh, Midge has not been herself, and it's been a, quite a few years. And perhaps we saw this day coming, but you never know when it's coming, when it's going to arrive. 
Uh, but Lord, we thank you for Midge. We certainly thank you for the service she rendered in this congregation for many, many years on the organ. And Lord, that, that was one thing that never, even in her illness, that never went away. And Lord, that was you know, say, still the same Midge all along. We thank you, for, Lord, for that. But now, Lord, give your care and your comfort and your kindness and compassion to uh, Greg and his family. And, and Lord, tomorrow when we gather together, we pray for a, a blessed time of joyful celebration, Lord, of you and your promises. And Lord, those promises uh, for um, Midge, you know, that have come to fulfillment. We thank you. Lord, we lift that family to you today. Lord, we pray for our sister Jan, that you will sustain her, Lord, in the midst of her trial and, and just not feeling well and not feeling like eating well. And God, we pray that you would give her strength day by day and great peace, Lord, in, you know, with the, the future that lies ahead just the same. Uh, bless her family, Lord. We pray for Kendall, that you will give him great peace. And, but also, Lord, um, great joy to be able to spend the days that they have together to be able just to continue to do so. And so we lift them up before you. Lord, for our brother Bill, we pray for healing for his knee. For uh, uh, Carrie, we pray that you will help her to continue to recuperate from her surgery. Lord, we pray for Marlis and Betty and Lane and Cornelia as they continue to... Uh, you know, receive treatment, Lord, for their illnesses, their injuries. We pray that you would stretch out your hand upon them today. Uh, Lord, we're going to pray for Tyler and Ashley later, but Lord, for them, we just give you thanks for what you're doing, um, and the gift that you've given to them in, in little Andrew. And we pray that for what you're doing in them to prepare them with all, all the wisdom they need to help raise their children to know and love you. And we pray that you would pour forth continued wisdom into their lives. Father, we uh, give you thanks today as we recognize our teachers and Sunday school leaders and uh, uh, youth and adults and, and children. God, thank you for those who serve with children in worship, uh, who help lead songs, Lord, who help lead in prayer. God, thank you for all those individuals. And Lord, we couldn't do it without them. And Lord, help us each to grow as servants and, and grow us our capacity to be able to serve, Lord. And, uh, you know, taking maybe little baby steps here and there and finding out it's, you know, serving you is n not as hard as we thought and a lot more fun than we could have ever imagined. And so, God, thank you for those individuals. We lift them up. Uh, Father, and, and many of us are anxious to, uh, about our fields and the moisture there and uh, having a little too much of it. Lord, we pray that you would send sun and wind to dry up the fields that our, our farmers and our friends can get out in the field and do the work that needs to be done to prepare, Lord, for what we pray would be a bountiful harvest this fall. Lord, we give you all these needs and lay them up before you. And around this room, Lord, there are many more people who, who need your help, and we pray that you will come to their aid and hear their prayers. Lord, some of those prayers only get, you know, are only heard in the, in the middle of the night in tears and sobs. And Jesus, we pray that you will hear in heaven and answer according to your will. We love you. And together we pray as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, it's our great joy and delight this morning to... Uh, to have the opportunity to witness what God is doing in little Andrew's life this morning. Uh, how, it's been a, about a month, five weeks he's been born? Five, four weeks, four weeks since little Andrew's been born. You see his picture there up on the screen. Well, here's what Jesus said, friend. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Lord speaks through the pen of the Apostle Paul when he wrote, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope in your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. And he continues uh, as well, Do you know that not all of us, or excuse me, that all of us have been baptized into Christ Jesus, that we were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him in baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by, by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. 
the Lord said through, through Moses in Genesis, or to Moses, or, uh, pardon me, I get my biblical characters mixed. The Lord said to Abraham in Genesis, I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And then when Jesus had come and died and risen and ascended back to the Father and the Spirit had come down, Peter said this, The promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our calls. Now friends, uh, baptism is the sign and seal of God's promises to us as covenant people. In baptism, God promises by grace alone to forgive our sins, to adopt us into the body of Christ the church, to send the Holy Spirit daily to renew and cleanse us, and to resurrect us unto eternal life. This promise, that promise is made visible in the waters of baptism. We know that uh, water refreshes. It's what we want on a hot day. But it also purifies it and, and cleanses and sustains. And how much more so is Jesus Christ, who is called the living water. Through baptism, Jesus calls us to a new obedience, to love and trust God completely, to forsake the evil of the world, and to live a new and a holy life. Yet when we fall into sin, we're not to despair of God's mercy, nor should we continue in sin, for baptism is the sign and seal of God's eternal covenant of grace with us. Well, on, on behalf of the uh, Board of Elders of First Reformed Church, Tyler and Ashley uh, bring their son Andrew to receive the sacrament of baptism. So Tyler and Ashley, you want to come up? Girls, you want to come up too? Yeah, come on up, come on up. You guys can just stand right here next to me. All right. Is this, is this scary? No, not really, huh? It's not scary. Okay. Well, Tyler and Ashley, you stand before us having brought little Andrew to receive the sacrament of baptism. I ask you, therefore, before God and Christ church to reject evil, to profess your faith in, in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of the church. Uh, Tyler and Ashley, do you renounce sin and the power of evil in your life and in the world? You do? And who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ. And do you promise to be the primary disciplers of your children, to be discipled so you can disciple, to study God's word with diligence and instruct your children in the truth of God's word, in the way of salvation through Jesus Christ? Do you promise to pray for them and teach them to pray, to train them in Christ's way by your life's example, and to live for Jesus with joy and thanksgiving, not drudgery and complaint? Do you promise to teach and demonstrate the importance of worship each day and regular worship with the whole body of the church? And in so doing, allow uh, this, your child, to grow up in Christ and in the nurture of the church. You do. And do you believe little Andrew will one day need to make a future profession of faith? Yes. All right. Now I'm going to ask the congregation, would you please stand with us? There's questions for you to answer as well. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Jesus Christ. If this is what you reaffirm, please say we do. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, do you promise to love, encourage, and support Tyler and Ashley by teaching the gospel of God's love in Jesus Christ to them and to their children, uh, by being an example of Christian faith and character, by faithfully praying for them in joy and in concern, and by giving the strong support of God's family and fellowship, care, and service by assisting Tyler and Ashley in raising Andrew and all their children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. If this is what you promise, please say we do. And Tyler and Ashley, will you allow the fellowship of God's people to assist you in raising all your children in Christ, allowing them to be a witness of God's, uh, to God's grace in Jesus Christ, a voice of God's Spirit, and a friend both to your children and to yourselves? We do. All right. All right, well, friends, let's confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. With one voice we say, I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, please be seated. Thank you. 
Let's pray. Would you bow your heads with me? Lord, we give you thanks. Uh, you are holy, you are gracious, and you are good. And we give you thanks, Lord, for the gift of water. We remember in your word that it was in the beginning of creation, your spirit moved over the waters. In the waters of the flood, Lord, you destroyed evil in the world. You led the children of Israel through the sea and into the freedom of the promised land. In the river Jordan, uh, John baptized our Lord and your spirit anointed him. And by his death and resurrection, Jesus Christ, the living water, frees us from sin and death and opens the way to life everlasting. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this gift of baptism. In it, you confirm to us that we are buried with Christ in his death, raised to share in his resurrection, and are being renewed by the Holy Spirit. And so now, Lord, we pray that you would pour out your spirit upon us so that little Andrew may be in your time, as baptized today in your time, may wash clean and receive new life. And to you be all the honor and glory, dominion and power now and forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Well, Tyler and Ashley, what's the name of your little boy? Andrew Bryan. Oh, look at him. Nice and warm, isn't he? Yeah. He's asleep. We'll see if he stays that way. Not for long, huh? All right. Little Andrew, for you, Jesus Christ came into the world. For you, he died. And for you, he conquered death. All of this he did for you, little one, though you know nothing of it yet. We love because God first loved us. Andrew Brian Jorgensen, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Andrew, in baptism, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as a child of God's covenant. Amen. Well, friends, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only King and Head of the Church, this child is now received in the visible membership of Christ's church, engaged to confess the faith of Jesus Christ and to be God's faithful servant to him until his life's end. Thanks be to God. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. I'll pass him back to you. That wasn't too bad. No, he didn't scream. Yeah. There you go. Keep his little feet wrapped up. Wonderful. Hey, let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you cleanse and renew uh, this your child through your grace alone. Bless and strengthen little Andrew, Lord. Give him daily, Lord, the gift of your spirit, even as a child. Work in his heart and unfold unto him, Lord, the riches of your love. Deepen his faith. Keep him from the power of evil and enable him, Lord, to live a holy and blameless life until your kingdom comes. And we pray for that day, Lord, when he will respond to all the good news of the gospel that Tyler and Ashley share and teach, that they hear on Sunday mornings and at Sunday school and at youth group, that one day he would stand in this same spot and profess his faith in you, Jesus. We pray for that day. Give, Lord, your grace and kindness to Tyler and Ashley. Let them rejoice, Lord, in this gift of, of uh, little Andrew that you have given to them. Grant them, Lord, your spirit that they may have help from you to bring up all their children to know you, love you, and serve you, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, Tyler and Ashley, little Andrew, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's give God the thanks and praise for what he's doing here. <laughs> Lyle has a certificate to, Mac, uh, to uh, mark the occasion today. And we also have a blanket. You're, all your girls have received one of those. Yeah, yeah. And with that blanket, as it surrounds him, you are also surrounded with the prayers of the congregation. Thanks be to God. Let's give the Lord our thanks for this little baby. You can be seated. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, girls. Thank you, thank you. All right, we're going to turn our hearts uh, uh, to bring our offering and our, our voices to the king, friend. You know, we, ought, we bring an offering because we've got little Andrews. And I'm going to tell you what, next, uh, next service, second service today, we've got another little baby we're going to baptize too. You know, there's a family who's, who's joining the church. Dad, he's making uh, you know, reaffirmation of his faith. Their little baby's going to be born. The Santamas is their last name. And, and friends, there's two more in the pipeline. Okay, God's at work. There's more little Andrews that are coming. And we give to participate in seeing 
you know, them grow up to know and follow the Lord. Uh, we can give today in the blue bag our regular offering. The plate will be the Winslow offering. You could also give online. Uh, if you click the Give tab, or if you got your phone with you, whip it out. You know, text SFRC 77977. You'll see the link on your screen. Follow that. However we give, we always build a give to build God's kingdom one life at a time. In Christ there is no east or west, in Him no south or north, but one great fellowship of love throughout the whole wide earth. Glory to our God we sing, glory to our Lord and King, Christ who died for you and me to bring us unity. In Him shall true hearts everywhere their high communion find. His service is a golden cord, close binding all mankind. Glory to our God we sing, glory to our Lord and King, Christ who died for you and me to bring us Whatever your race may be, who serves my father as a son is surely kin to me. Glory to our God we sing, glory to our Lord and King, Christ who died for you and me to bring us unity. In Christ now meet both east and west, in him east, south, and north. All Christless souls are one in him throughout the whole wide earth. Glory to our God we sing, Glory to our Lord and King, Christ who died for you and me to bring us unity. Please stand with us. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Friends, please be seated. All right. Well, it's our joy this morning to turn to uh, uh, God's truth and His Word this morning. And um, we've started a series last week called, Now What? You know, Easter was awesome. It was great. It's a great celebration of what God has done for us. You know, Christ's death and His resurrection on the third day. Now what? Now what? I mean, we're like kids, you know, that we, we, we just got done with uh, um, going to, oh, what's that place in Kansas City? Worlds of Fun. And, you know, hollering to mom and dad from the back seat, now what are we going to do? You know, it's like, wasn't Worlds of Fun enough? Okay? Or, or you know, my, I've been thinking about this lately. You know, my girls are you know, a few years off still for, you know, they're going to be out of the house. But some of us enter into that time of life where, the, you know, kids are off at college and we kind of maybe see them at a few special times of the year. Maybe they want to come home for the summer, but they might be a bit reluctant. And mom and dad are sitting there and the house is quiet and not going to any sports activities. You're kind of like, well, now what do we do? That is a big question. After a big moment like Easter, now what? Well, friends, the joy of Easter continues 
as we get used by God, in the best sense of the word used, to help tell the message of the gospel to people. Last week we saw this in a um, gentleman named Philip. We're going to look at another person from the scriptures today, Peter, a little more widely known, and one of the encounters that he had. And, and in it, God's speaking to us, don't count anybody out. God doesn't count anybody out. Let's not count anybody out. And we'll see some principles, some practices for us to keep the joy of you know, Easter going by telling about the Gospel. So would you please turn with me uh, in your copy of the Scriptures. Uh, turn with me to Acts chapter 10. And we're going to read from a, the middle of verse 23 all the way uh, to the end of the chapter, verse 48. Now the reason for an extended portion is it's, this is a historical account of an interaction that Peter had with somebody who's you know, not, at this present time, uh, a believer in the Lord Jesus. And it takes some time to develop the story to see what God does. And there's some amazing things that happen. Now, I do need to give you some information beforehand. Okay, uh, Just for the sake of time, I'm not reading the whole chapter, but what you need to know before we read this is that there's a gentleman we're encountering in the Scripture. His name is Cornelius. He has a vision where an angel comes to him and, and says, send for Peter. Uh, there's a, he's down in the city of Joppa. Joppa is a uh, city on the coast of the Mediterranean in the region of Israel. Uh, Cornelius is about 25 miles away in Caesarea. This angel says, send for Peter. And so he sends a delegation to go get Peter. While they're coming, Peter has a vision of his own. He's a little bit hungry, and he went upstairs to, on the roof of a building to pray, and he goes into this trance where God gives him this vision. In the vision, he sees a big sheet, and in the sheet are, are several animals that for Peter would not have been allowed to eat, as a Jewish man, that Peter would not be allowed to eat. And God says in the vision, you know, what God has declared clean, do not say they're unclean. And that happens three times, and then finally it's done. Well, then we pick up the account where we're at today where um, you know, the, the delegation arrives to find Peter. So we're right in the middle of verse 23 where it begins the sentence the next day. So let's put our hearts down here to the Scriptures, or our eyes to the page, and open our hearts to the Scriptures and what the Spirit wants to say to us. The next day, Peter started out with them, that delegation that came, and some of the brothers from Joppa went along. The following day, he arrived in Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his uh, relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up. Stand up, he said. I am only a man myself. And talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, You are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with a Gentile or visit them or visit him. But God has shown me that I should not call any man impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. And may I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius answered, Four days ago I was in my house praying at this hour. At three in the afternoon, suddenly a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He is a guest in the home of Simon the Tanner, who lives by the sea. So I sent for you immediately, and it was good of you to come. Now, we are here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded, to tell, or commanded you to tell us. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear Him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how He went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with Him. We are witnesses of everything He did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed Him by hanging Him on a tree. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen uh, by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him and after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins 
through his name. And while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard him speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Lyle, please pray us in. Please pray with me. Yes, God, we thank you for this day. Thank you that we could yes, read we these do. scriptures. And yeah, we're reminded again of the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And we saw today, too, this baptism, this blessed renewal of a covenant that's existed yeah. for thousands of years with you. And so yeah. we just thank you that we could baptize Andrew in the name of Jesus Christ. And we look forward, too, to Desmond in the second service. So yeah. we thank you for that great celebration. And now we pray that your Holy Spirit would be on Pastor Paul in a strong and powerful way, mm-hmm. not only for this service, but for the congregational meeting, the service to follow, and for the funeral on Monday. So be with him in the coming days here in a, in a special and strong way. Yes, Lord. And now open our hearts and our minds to hear your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, just as it is a joy for uh, me to pray for all of you, I enjoy every time that the elders pray for us, uh, for God's Word. Now what? Easter's come and gone. Now what? It's our, now what's the opportunity to tell the Gospel? You know, I didn't share this with you last time. We made this, you know, big megaphone. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me? You know, maybe the cheerleaders would like to use this when we're done with it this fall, you know. The, just, just as a representation to say, the now what is to tell people about Jesus. To see the joy of Easter come and telling people about Jesus and by God's good grace and mercy, people come to respond. That's the now what? That's the joy that keeps Easter going is the opportunity to tell people about Jesus. That's how the, that's how it can, that's how the joy continues. And, and when we do this, friends, we ought not to count anybody out because we don't know where God is working. We have no idea. When, when, let's go to the Scriptures here. When Peter's sitting up on top of this house and this delegation comes to get him, he has absolutely no clue, no clue that God's been working in advance. In fact, he even comes to the point where he asks the people the question, tell me, why did you send me? We don't know where God is working, but we know God is working. He's drawing people to himself. Now, this is a really interesting uh, 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 scripture text. And I think there's some things we can draw from it and and that God wants us to see about what He's doing and how we participate in what He's doing and our joyful response to the Gospel that we have received and uh, we need to tell others as well. So now what is what we're going to ask the question of ourselves today. So as we look, look back at the Scripture text with me, Peter, you know, he heads down uh, to uh, Caesarea. Well, really up to Caesarea. Uh, it's about a 25-mile journey. So they set out one day, and it says that they, you know, they got there you know, the next day. Having, received the, having uh, got there, uh, they arrived there, and uh, Peter comes. There's, uh, uh, Cornelius has gathered you know, all of his close friends and relatives because he's really excited about what Peter would say, even though he may not know exactly what Peter's going to say, but it's really important I want us to note one important thing right off the get-go. And it's a note we saw last time that we need to just review once again. And that is this, that God puts Christians into position. It just so happened that Peter was within a relative close proximity. We say 25 miles and they had to walk that far. You know, that's about as far as people normally would walk in those days, so it wasn't that big of a deal. But God puts Peter in that right position. And not only that, but after Cornelius had this vision of this angel who visited him, he's bringing all his friends and, and his relatives to his house and saying, you've got to listen to what this guy is going to say. You see how God works this? It's like, it's like the Lord is, a, is you know, the coach on the sidelines, and he's directing his players to be at certain positions on the court. Uh, to give them the most advan- advantage you know, to scoring and, or otherwise you know, defending their opponent. You see what I'm doing? This is the exact same thing we had, saw last week. God putting people into the right posi- place in the right times. Now, what we, I want us to uh, take note of here that we didn't say last week is that you, you're in a position in your life, maybe at work, in your neighborhood, at school, in a you know, classroom at school, your locker, we talked about that, 
Sometimes we say to ourselves, you know, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a missionary, I can't do anything. Fooey! Who's Peter? How long has he been walking with Jesus? Three years? How long have you been walking with Jesus? Some of you might say, well, that's been three years. Some of you might say, well, it's been 13 years. Some of you might say, well, it's been 30 years. Anybody been walking with Jesus 60 years or more? You can't raise your hand. Yeah! See? You're way more qualified than Peter ever was. And he's got you in position, God's got you in position in your place in life and has equipped you with more than what Peter had to join God in what he wants to do. God puts us, the people in the right place in the right positions. And so Peter arrives at this house, doesn't really know what's going to happen. This gentleman, Cornelius, who is kind of a wealthy guy, drops at Peter's feet. You know, it's an act of worship that he's doing. And Peter says to him in verse 26, you know, Stand up, I'm only a man myself. Cornelius has great reverence for Peter, uh, even though Peter you know, is certainly not worthy of it and deflects it as well. And so they, they walk into the great room and Peter says, you know, you know, um, I really, sh you know, according to Jewish law, I really shouldn't be doing this. You know, it's not, it's not for us to, uh, you know, Jews to sit down or associate with a Gentile. He says this, but then he says, but, but God has shown me that I should not call any man impure or unclean. How does, how does Peter know that? How does Peter know that? You know, God has put him in the right place at the right time, sending this delegation to find him. How does Peter know that he shouldn't call any man impure or unclean? Well, it goes back to this vision that Jesus had. And God's saying in that vision, what God has said is unclean, do not call unclean. And Peter's got, Peter's got the message that the Lord wanted to communicate that allows Peter to walk into this, you know, you know, this home of Cornelius where he knows by Jewish law he ought not to go. But God says, no, you can go. You can go. And that's another truth point that we need to see for ourselves, friends. Sometimes God's got to work in us first. God's got to overcome our hurdles in life before uh, He can use us. Uh, sometimes God's got to work in us to convict us of you know, our, our own sin in our lives. There's just something that we've hidden from the rest of the world nobody knows about. And God's got to convict us of that before He can use us so that we're you know, pliable and usable and unto His kingdom's work and goals. Sometimes, friends, sometimes we just got to get over our own prejudice. Sometimes that's prejudice you know, via skin color. Sometimes it's you know, prejudice over hair color or political party. Sometimes God's got to work in us. I, I can remember the time I was talking to somebody, I think they had green hair or, or bright pink hair. Do you ever look at somebody with green hair, bright pink hair, or some other wild color and you say, why did you do that? Do you ever do that? I mean, truly, I, I don't, I, you know, I just say, I take the color of hair God gave me. Now it's brown, someday it'll be gray. And okay, that's fine. But other people, you know, they like to do stuff with their hair. And there took a moment in my life where God had to say, you know, why do you, why do you think stuff about people with pink hair or green hair? You know, what really matters is what's in their heart. You know, that was a hurdle for me to have a conversation with somebody who had a wild hair color. I've never seen anybody quite with a rainbow hair color yet, but anyhow, you get the point. What God said and spoke to my life, Paul, you're letting their hair color get in the way of you having the opportunity to share with them about Jesus. Why do you do that? I care about what's in their hearts and agree. That's what God cares about. Because he, he, And it says in the Scriptures, He doesn't care what's on the outside, what looks on the outside. God looks at what's in the heart. You know what I'm talking about? Sometimes we have prejudices that God's got to work in us to get rid of. Peter's got one. And it comes from the Jewish law that says you cannot associate with Gentiles you can't enter into their homes. You can't talk to them. You're not supposed to do that. Jesus Himself would get in trouble for doing that very thing when He met the, you know, the woman at the well. She was not Jewish. She was a, a Samaritan. And it was a no-no to be talking with her. But Jesus jumps right over that barrier. 
And now the Lord has got Peter doing the exact same thing. That vision that he saw up on the, on the uh, top of the building uh, moved them in his heart. Where does God need to move in your heart today to get over the hump of a prejudice? You know, sometimes it's a political party. We've got to get over the hump. Sometimes, friends, it's just our own selfishness. Where, well, somebody else will help that person. Somebody else will tell them about Jesus. When we talked last week, you, this might be the only time you get to share with somebody. Take the opportunity. Sometimes we say, well, I've got you know, to make dinner for the kids. Or I've got to go to so-and-so's house. You know, there'll be opportunities and the kids can wait 15 minutes for dinner. It's a matter in our lives of getting over the hump of not me first, but putting other people first. And, to, and the Lord must work in us before that we can be join Him in what He's doing. Now, now that God has worked within Peter to get over that hump, you know, he comes to this question. Look at verse 26. Or excuse me, not verse 20. Verse 29. He asks the question. Remember last time, the relationship, you get to ask the question, and that opens the doors. He asks the question, um, may I ask, why have you sent me? And that opens the door for this question. Cornelius then goes in and, uh, and he explains the story about his, you know, having the angel visit him and sending for, for Peter. You know, what we need to see here is, friends, before, before Peter even knew that these guys were coming, God was already working in advance. And it's just like the Lord to do that. He always works in advance. Before we know it, before we see it, the Lord is working and stirring in people's hearts. And he bends space, time, and circumstances to bring us together at the right time, at the right place, with the right message to help people take the step towards Jesus. Some of you have been in that position. It's just like a holy moment where God puts you right where you need to be and where you are is where God wants you, where that person is. And they've opened the door and said, here's, here's what it is. So if you look here, God's working. And at the very end then, we see this, verse 33, So I sent for you immediately, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Wow! Talk about an open door! That doesn't happen very often. Someone says, tell me what you have to say, what God has told you to say. Tell, tell us. Tell us right now. So there's a couple, a couple other truth notes that we need to see. Okay? The Lord is working before we know it or see it. Oftentimes, we don't even see it in the moment. So we're going to pray about having our eyes open and God being able to see. But the Lord is working. okay. And then, we need to see this. What Cornelius says in verse 33, tell us, list, or, or, excuse me, uh, we're all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. You know, it's, it's really, friends, it's the Lord's message. It's not our message. Sometimes I, when I visit people, well, sometimes, all the time, when I visit people at the hospital or in their home and they're dealing with some significant illness and, or struggle in their life, uh, I'll, I'll ask the question, what do you want me to tell people when they ask, you know, how's Bob doing? How's Joyce doing? What do you want me to tell them? Now, I ask that question because sometimes people don't want me to say anything and I just kind of keep my mouth shut. You know, there's been a few times, Sunday mornings, people will come up to me in a bit of a, a, bit of a frustrated voice and say, hey, you didn't say anything about so-and-so. How come you didn't have it in the bulletin? Well, I asked and they didn't want anything to be in there. So I always ask. So that when I'm speaking, I'm not saying my message of how they're doing. I'm speaking for the person who's in the hospital or dealing with the illness or the sickness, and I'm delivering their message. What they want to have communicated. What Peter's about to share and what Cornelius has asked him to share is not, it is not Peter's message. It's God's message. And not only is it God's message, but it also comes with God's power. So when we look here at the Scriptures, it's God's message and it comes with God's power. Look at the message. Let's go there first. So he, he dives into the message. Uh, he he kind of starts where they're at. Uh, Cornelius is a, he's a God-fearing man. He knows a little bit about Jewish truth and Jewish practices. He's not, uh, he's not Jewish himself. But he starts with where they're at. Okay, Verse 36, You know the message God sent to the people of Israel. 
telling them the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord over all. And he walks through you know, the, the life of Jesus from his baptism uh, by John in the Jordan in verse 37, uh, the Spirit coming on him you know, at that time, verse 38, and coming with power. Uh, verse 38, how we run around healing, doing good, uh, you know, casting out demons, setting people free. Verse 39, he goes on to tell the story. You know, we saw all of this. Uh, and that they killed him by hanging on the tree. Verse 40, God raised him from the dead on the third day, caused him to be seen. We were witnesses of that. Not everybody did, but we saw it with our own eyes. He ate and drank with him. He told us to preach in verse 42. Uh, God appointed him as judge of the living and the dead. The prophets in the Old Testament, talk about this. And look what happens. While he's talking, verse 44, the Holy Spirit comes on them. When they're hearing this message, God is moving with great power and their hearts are being moved to trust and believe because the Spirit's falling on them in that moment. And what we'll see in a bit here is that was Peter's indication that they had come to that same spot where Peter and the others had come when the Spirit fell on them, that they have come to this place of believing and trusting in Jesus. It's God's message and it comes with God's power. Notice! Notice, he doesn't defend the truth of the, you know, the Bible for them at the moment that would have been the Old Testament. He doesn't try to uh, per persuade them of the existence of God. Notice that he doesn't try to persuade them you know, uh, you know, with you know, um, you know, your best life now or how you know, God can be your best friend, you know, kind of Christianity light. He just gives them the truth about Jesus. He was baptized, you know, filled with the Spirit, did miracles, cast out evil, died, raised again on the third day, sent us out with power to preach. That's all He tells them. That's it. Sometimes we, we, uh, we say to ourselves, friends, I, I, I just I, I can't do that. I don't know how to defend the, the Bible or, or to give a logical explanation of why it's true. I, I, can't, I can't do that. Peter doesn't do that. He just shares the word, the truth about Jesus. And what happens? God moves upon their hearts with His power. The Spirit comes on them. His power comes down. And they come to believe. And that's the last truth note. The Lord's the one who converts people's hearts. If you look at the very end in verse 47, and Peter comes to that conclusion where he was at. And what's keeping these people from being baptized with water? They're believers. The Spirit has come upon them. They received the Spirit as just as we have. That was the indication that they had come to believe and God was moving upon their hearts. It's God who converts people's hearts. We often put our pressure on ourselves and say, you know, I've got to have just the right words. I've got to say it just the right way so that these people will believe in Jesus. Peter's not saying that. He's like, why'd you send me? And he just tells about Jesus. And God takes over from there and moves upon people's hearts. You see how easy this is? That's why God's, I mean, that's, that's what God wants us to do. Just to tell people about Jesus. And He takes over the work of conversion within people's hearts because it's His message, it's His power, it's His converting work to turn people to Him. Who are we? We're just the Peters. Who was Peter when Jesus picked him up by the lakeside? Who was he? Say it out loud. He was a fisherman. You know, folks, he's just like us. Regular old folk, no, no lofty education, you know. Regular old, you know, folk who just do a regular old job, but God picks them up and uses them for His great gospel purpose. If God can use Peter, who walked with Jesus for three years, He can use you too, friends, and the work that God wants to do in the na your neighbors' lives. God wants to do, you know, with your friends at school. That God wants to do in you, you know, in the Lions Club and the people you know there, or, or you know, people who are friends with you on the next country mile, your neighbors across the way, or that guy that you help harvest in the fall. If God can use Peter, and he only has walked with Jesus for three years, and you've been walking with Jesus for you know, 3, 13, 30, or 60 years, man, he can use you too, can he? Yes, he can. He puts you in the right position. He's already been at work within people. Uh, he's been working before we know it. But it's his message. It comes with his power. And God moves with his, uh, in that power to draw people to Himself. So what do we got to do to be like a Peter? Or like last week, with you, God using us uh, uh, to fill up? Because God doesn't count people out. We, we kind of discriminate. Well, I can't talk to that person. He's got pink hair. 
Well, I can't talk to that person. They've got the wrong color skin. Or they can't talk to that person because he's a Democrat or she's a Republican. I can't talk to that person. God doesn't do that. He puts us in the right place at the right time with the right people to share in that moment. What do we got to do? Here's what we're going to do. Number one, we're going to pray. We talked about this last week because, friends, so often we've grown up with, without like a radar on. What I mean by radar is we're, we don't have the awareness that there's people all around us who need Jesus. You know, we've grown up in very Christian northwest Iowa where a lot of people are Christian, but n- not everyone. You know, I'm, you know, sometimes when you read KIWA and you, you read the, you know, the crime report and who gets arrested, I'm surprised at how many people's last names start with V or end with SMA. Okay? There's a lot of people who need Jesus in northwest Iowa. And there's more and more and more and more. We talked last week, you know, the millennial generation, that, you know, like, in the 20s and younger, they're the highest number of people who say, if you have any religious affiliation, you know, just broad religious affiliation, they're the highest who say, I have none. And they're often called the nuns. And friends, they're right here in northwest Iowa too. Young people. But that doesn't say there isn't you know, older people who are your age. Uh, there are you know, people who are younger in your elementary school or in your high school. There's a lot of people here who need Jesus. And there's a lot of people who need Him all around the world. The mission field is here and around the world. We've got to pray because we've got to ask God, open my eyes to see the opportunities to tell people about Jesus. Sometimes we're like Peter, we've got to ask, you know, why would you send for me? And God reveals the opportunity right before His very eyes. We need to open our eyes so that we can see the opportunities and let God use us for that work. So begin to pray. Lord, open my eyes to see the opportunities you're putting before me. Number two, here's what we're going to do. Number two, there we go. Share while the, doors, uh, the, while the door is open. When Peter asked the question, Cornelius gave him the explanation, the door was open. And he begins to share. Now, sometimes people... You know, they'll start to close that door and you've got to pay attention to that because nobody likes a, a car salesman who's pushy. Nobody likes someone sharing about Jesus who's pushy. So if the door begins to close, let it close. Keep the relationship because the door will open again. The door will open again if you're not pushy. But share while the door is open. And you'll know it's open because they'll be receptive. You can watch it in their, in their eyes. You can see it in their nonverbal communication whether their, the door's still open or not. Or they'll say something. Okay, I think I'm done. Okay, let it be done. Share while the door is open. If it closes, keep the relationship to be able to share again. Lastly, this. Okay, here we go. Tell what you know about Jesus. Look what Peter shared here. He didn't go into any long detail of the miracles of Jesus. He hit the high points. His baptism, the coming of the Spirit, the miracles, His dying on the cross for sin. It was rising on the third day. Uh, and, you know, and them being witnesses of that. Just tell what you know about Jesus. You know all this stuff. We talked about last week. You know, you've probably had 2,500 you know, sermons in your life. You know, if you're 50 years old and you've been going you know, every church every Sunday, you know, you're about, you've heard like 25 sermons. Somebody came up to me afterwards and said, you know, if you used to go to Sunday night church, you got two. So you got like uh, 50, you know, 54, 5,400 sermons in your whole life that you've heard. That's a lot. So you've learned a lot about who Jesus is and what he's done. Tell people about it. Start with your testimony. Start there. How has Jesus worked in your life? Then tell of His grace that God accepts people not because of things we do, but because He's kind and just and we accept Him by grace through faith, just by merely trusting Him. Tell of His death for sin. Tell of His resurrection. Tell of His coming again when He's going to make all things new. You know, friends, that actually is, a, I, I, I believe, a very powerful truth that people in our day need to hear. Because there are a lot of people worked up about environmental things, and we need to be mindful of that. I'm not for destroying the earth or polluting every river or anything like that. But there's some people who are genuinely super sensitive to those things. And if they know that one day God's going to make all things new, and that's exactly what they want. Use that to your you know, evangelistic efforts. Because that's what they need to hear. And it come, but it comes through Jesus. And we experience that uh, through faith in Jesus and you know, being sharers in that. Tell of those things. Tell them. It doesn't, you don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to have a seminary degree. You just have to tell people about Jesus. Look for the open doors and pray, God, 
Let my eyes be open. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen? Amen. Amen.